As promised, today we're making Victorian Valentine's decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Okay, first project, we're going to do a Victorian inspired swag. We're going to take two of these Dollar Tree pink trees. What other type of little wood hearts or paper hearts you have? A card or a printout that is Victorian inspired. And then of course there's a variety of beads and pearls and stickers that you can get from Dollar Tree. Just to give you some options of things that I think might would work for vintage Victorian inspired. And then these beautiful bundles of flowers. And these were thrifted. I got two bundles of these. And they match perfectly I think with this card. So just make sure it's coordinating. I thrifted these beautiful ribbons. All right, so we're gonna take these out of the box. All you're gonna need is the two trees. You're going to spread those branches apart and out so that they're flat on one side. And pretty much, you can make them flat on both sides. Just spread them all out to these sides. We're gonna be using these branches of the trees to connect our pieces down to the swag. Now this is not the same type of swag as we did in a previous Valentine's video, so it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to make a long, almost like a teardrop shaped swag, but it's going to be long. It's going to be like, I think it ends up being like 23 inches, maybe. You're just going to overlap them and then use your zip ties to go through the bottom. I like to make sure that they go around sections that have branches because it kind of keeps them from slipping back and forth. It kind of locks them in place. So I'm just going to use two to hold it together. One on each end to hold both of those middle sections together. And you clip off your extra and then again with the fluffing out on the sides so that we have plenty on each side to hang on to whatever type of ribbons and greenery we want to put down on this. And there will be a lot on it. So whatever type of greenery you like, you can use. I have some, um, I think this is eucalyptus. It's faux eucalyptus and a little bit of ferns. My ferns, you ended up not even seeing those because they're flat. They don't have any dimension. They would have been better as flyaways. So you could actually skip this part if you don't want to do it. But you can see here how I'm connecting them down to the base. You just grab one branch and twist it around. That's all you have to do. And you're going to go all the way up and down this way. We want it to look kind of wider at the top and more tapered at the bottom. So you'll see as I'm going through the process exactly how I do that. I'm gonna take two of the little picks and put up top, kind of pointing upward and out to the side a little bit. And it's going to extend past the pink of the tree underneath, that's okay. I kind of like the idea. It makes it look a little wider. It makes it look like you spend a little more time and money when you were making it, even though we don't, because you know I use my thrifted things and I recycle. I have used these picks in so many different things and I just pull them out when I'm done and I just use them again. I love it. You can really, really, really save your money when you can use the same things in your projects over and over again. So for me, yeah, budget is always something to consider, always. I don't care how much money you have. I really think that sticking to a budget teaches you a lot of things and um, self-control and such. So yeah, I guess you learn those types of lessons with crafting too, don't you? Okay, so it is going to look messy. And if you've ever watched any of my videos before, especially when it has to do with florals and wreaths, I always say that, you know, it's going to look worse before it looks better, so just don't stop because I actually almost stopped once I got this base layer down and, you know, thought this is this is not going to work. I'm, I'm losing my vision here, but then it worked out. It worked out perfectly and I'm okay. I'm okay now with it. I really like the way that it turned out. It was a big surprise, but you'll see that um, I always like to show my final pieces in the end, so you will see that. Okay, so now that we've got all the greenery down, we're going to start adding these florals. And these particular picks are wrapped with like a papery type stuff. 
and they're in sections so there's actually like six sections but they're in twos you can see here then I just pull it down and we can separate those bundles into smaller bunches you can trim down the wires and then you can just kind of twist up the ends so that they stay together or you can use some floral wire to twist them together whichever way you prefer to do that is is okay it was very easy to do I love the wild look of these flowers they just look like wildflowers to me and they just look like I don't know I don't see a lot of huge florals in the Victorian things that I've seen I see uh, you know roses and things like that but for the most part what you see is sprays of kind of what maybe you would see in a wildflower field you know something like that it's kind of a variety and they're kind of small and I just really just took the inspiration from the card for how this would be for how it would lay out and what would look like it would go together I hope that makes sense and then you know a lot of it too with crafting is you just kind of go with your gut you just kind of add here and there and if you don't like it when you look at it take it off start again right that's all you got to do so again for this to be a tear a teardrops kind of shaped swag I like to make most of my flowers point downward and then up toward the top I like some of them to be facing up and outward just like we did with the greenery and all you have to do once you get enough down there is just kind of thread your little wires and your stems right down into what's already wrapped up underneath it'll get become kind of like a mat and it's kind of woven down there because you got so many wraps that everything locks into place and it just stays there really really well and then and I want my flowers to be laying flat I want them to kind of be out a little bit and I want to pull some of the greenery that is under the flowers up and through there so that you get a little representation of all the greenery that you put under there and you can see a little of the fern sticking out on the side so maybe if you do the ferns keep them closer to the outside or use them as flyaways here is my homemade bow making tool I do have a video on that if you are interested it is very helpful um, with certain types of bows so I'm just going to put this down and I'm going to have I think about 12 inches of tails probably longer than that but I do trim them down and then I'm going to have six inch loops on each side and then when you have a this ribbon you can actually see the print on both sides but one side looks faded and the other side is very crisp so I'm just making sure that in the center I give it a little twist so that I keep the pretty part of the bow on the outside just like that and I'm just laying that loop right on top of the other one to make sure that it is the same size there are lots of ways to make bows and you could make it smaller and smaller toward the center but for this bow I just wanted to go ahead and do it like this and put six loops on the left and six on the right there are people who like or prefer to have odd numbers and that's probably the best way to do it because I know in floral design odd numbers seem to be the way to go but you know me I have to have the same amount on each side for some reason in my brain that makes me happy so that's how I'm gonna do mine but you can do yours any way you like and if you don't like this bow use whatever type of bow you know how to make already and that'll be fine too but a simple bow like this I think would be good for the style that I'm going for so I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and twist around the center of the bow and then you can just start pulling the loops out put your hand in the middle and push those wires out because this is wired bow this will not give you the same effect if you use a floppy ribbon that doesn't have any wire in it and just kind of fluff it out and I'll turn that one inside out because I didn't flip it in the right direction got to get those bows fluffed then I'm going to feed my chenille stem or my pipe cleaner right through there making sure that it wraps around the that center pole part of the tree and yes it's a struggle I'm struggling here but I do finally get it through there and I'm going to pull both sides to the back and then I will twist it around to hold it in place
I'll be trimming that up later. Now I'm just going to make sure that before I make it really tight that I have the bow where I want it on the swag. Now it is up in the top probably one third of this. I like that position for this. I think it's going to give me room to put the card there too so it'll work. And then I'm going to dovetail my ends. I do cut these down a little bit to make them a little bit shorter. And I'm going to make a couple of these little things that we'll be using in a little while. They're just going to be some false tails. You're just going to fold it over in half and then dovetail it. And then I have two, I have a, um, a couple of little sections and I think I made three of these. And just put those aside. Now we're going to work on the card. So I'm turning the card inside out and kind of pinching and pushing and weakening that bond in the middle. And then I can just tear it off or cut it off of the, uh, the back piece and then trim it up on top so it looks nice and neat. If you'd like a frayed look though, you could certainly leave it. And there's a beautiful card up close with the little cherub and the little couple in the back. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard that I have trimmed down a little bit. I'm going to add some school glue, some Elmer's glue, and put this down on here and press it down with my hands and then take the little squeegee and make sure that it is nice and flat and every piece of that card is sticking to that board behind it. And then I'll just trim that off. This is just going to give it a little stronger of a base and it will give us something to attach another pipe cleaner to so we can put it down. Now I'm just using a little bit of this it's like an alcohol ink or something. Don't usually use it, but I have a few times. And a tiny sponge brush just to go all around my edges of this card to give it a little bit of an aged look. I'll let it dry because it does take a little while. Then I'm going to take some of these little pearl beads and very carefully with my magnifying glasses on, I'm going to put a couple of these little pearls here and there and I'm going to put it in the center of the wheels and on the little card that the bird is holding up top. And then these beautiful Dollar Tree flower stickers. I'm gonna put one over each of the hearts and I guess where the, the headlights would be if this was a car maybe. And press that down. I love that it's got the gold on it around the edges. It's really pretty. And then I'll add right to the center another one of those little pearl beads. It's just a little dimension, it's just a little something extra, and with Victorian, I think that that does make a difference in your projects. So I've got some of this old trim, I don't know how old it is, to me it looks like it's from the 80s, but who knows. And I'm going to, look how pretty, it's like a lace with a gold in it. I'm going to put this on the back of the card to sort of frame it out. Gives it a little something extra makes it look a little richer, a little fancier, and I think that it will draw a little more attention to it once we put it on this wreath because it's going to be beneath that floral ribbon that really is an eye catcher, but I still want the card to get some attention because that's the whole point in here. And in this video, you're going to be seeing, I guess, probably three different color schemes um, for the Victorian inspired look, and you can just decide which one you like best. If you do like the pastels and the pinks, this may be the one for you. I love that it has those pretty pinks and blues together and the wildflowers, of course. Go all the way around the card and then trim it off where you overlap it so that you don't see a, um, you don't want to be seeing a, a gap there. And then there's the little frame around it. I know, um, has that grainy chic look, I guess. Put a little hot glue on the back, and then we're gonna put a little piece of cardboard or a little paper cardstock on the top of it. Let it cool, and then you know that the glue has set up. And then we're just gonna feed that through there, just like we did with the bow, till we get to the back. And then do not pull it all the way down to tighten it. Just pull it enough that it's sort of floating on the bow. I am reusing these beautiful hearts that I used last year in a Valentine's Day project. As you can see all the paper on the back. And I'm going to put some floral picks on the back so that we can put these down in here without having it, without them just falling into the frame. I don't want it falling into it and disappearing. I want it to kind of stand out toward the front. So I'll find my placement 
and then I can add some hot glue and keep them in place. It's important when you have something that's got a little weight to it or heavy that you hold it in place until the glue sets up or when you let go it's going to fall down and it will dry exactly that way. Okay, so now I'm going to take another little piece of floral pick, and this just happens to be colored white, and some floral wire, and I'm going to wrap it around the center of those little tails that we made earlier that I told you we would need, like, I think three of them, depending on how many you want. Then I'm going to add some hot glue and just push these up into the bottom. And I am looking for a tight spot in there. If you see me moving, moving it around a few times, I'm looking for a spot where it will really lock it in and hold it in place. I decided to trim these up more. This is where I do this because I want it to, the appearance of it to be, it's kind of rounded out, kind of rounded out on the bottom, right? But still giving it that teardrop shape. I hope that makes sense to you. It does in my head, but sometimes when it comes out my lips, it just does not sound the same. All right, so now I've got those little tails there and you can do some in the top if you would like. And then finish adding in whatever hearts you have. Now, I only had four hearts. I did not have five, so I had to use the even number. And I'm just going to put a couple of bends in my ribbon. You don't have to necessarily leave them straight down. You can bend them, you can curl them, you can twist them. Whatever it is that you like to do to make it perfect for you. Now we're going to make a hanger. So this exposed end up here, which is the top, I'm just folding over about eight inches of that ribbon and I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to start in the front and glue it into the center and then I will flip it over and wrap the sides toward the center and now I'm just I just put those two layers together so they wouldn't move around and then do it over here on the back side and of course, while I'm on the back side, this would be a great time for me to cut off the extras on the back so that it looks nice and neat. I'm going to take another tail without adding it to a pick and just glue it straight to the back of the card. And that really fills out the bottom of this swag and gives it a little something extra that I think makes it just really pretty and stand out. I hope you like this one. I really do like it. The next is going to be a Victorian inspired sign. We're going to take these keys and hearts from the Dollar Tree and some of this beautiful Victorian paper that I've had quite some time. I think I have two more sheets left. It's tissue paper. A heart from the Dollar Tree and some white paint and a sponge brush. I'm going to take the tag and the hanger off. I'm going to add some of this paint all over here. Now the reason I'm painting it is because the lighter the color underneath, the more the items will stand out on your paper. It'll really see the difference in the brightness between the side that's on the table and the side that's on the white. That's the look that I like. I really want it to be bright and pop against the white that's in the background. And you will not be able to see that white so that you don't have to do a perfect paint job and you can certainly use chalk paint for that if you would like. You could even spray paint it. So I'm going to trim up a square, enough to work with, make it a little more manageable, and then I'm going to take my glue stick and rub it all over the heart. The reason the purple is disappearing so quickly is because I used my little heat tool to dry my paint. So it's sort of warm and it makes it the glue dry kind of quickly. And it looks like it wouldn't dry at all at this point, but it does. It still has some tack and it does hold on to this tissue paper with no problem whatsoever. And I love that there's no bubbling. The paper is not wet, so it's not tearing. It's not hard to manage. I'm going to go from sort of the center outward to make sure if there are any wrinkles or lumps or bumps, we can get them out. And then using my emery board from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to file off all of this extra. Very easy to do. You can cut this with scissors if you don't have an emery board, a sanding block, or some sanding paper. Some people um, I've seen really, really like those finger sanders, so that would work too. I'm going to take some brush gold paint, and I am going to sort of put it on this little stencil brush, and then go up and down all over 
several of these different hearts. Now, there are several different styles, so I'm just painting one of each style till I can decide which one I want. And I'll also paint the keys. I'm going to go over with that same brush. I didn't add any more paint to it, and I'm going to go all over the edges. And then on the, probably like the last mm, quarter inch from the outside inward, just to age it a little bit. I have some red cord. You could use red jute or a piece of thin red ribbon, uh, some lace here if you wanted to do that. I'm going to flip it over on the back and glue it down. I'm going to put the glue on there and then we'll use the little pieces of paper to kind of lock it into place. You could trim off the excess. Then I want this to look like it is hanging from the cord without actually having them hang from the cord. Now, from a distance, you cannot really, it's hard to see this gold. It really does not pop whatsoever. So you may choose to do pastel colors. You may do silver. You might want to do white here. Depending on the busyness of your paper in the background. Because you just really cannot see this unless you were up close. I'm just adding it right to the tippy tops to have it glue down to the cord. I'm not trying to glue it to the heart in the back just a little bit so it sticks down to the board and it still kind of has that freedom of movement. It moves around a little bit and I, I like that. So now I have some more of these flowers and I want to add these for a little more dimension but you certainly don't have to. I'm going to put this really really pretty flower on the bottom. It is a cream color with gold my finger is gold. You can see my hands have paint all over them. And then I just added two here and there. And there's the one on the bottom. And I took that same dry brush with the gold and went over those to kind of dull them down a little bit. Now I'm going to just glue these back on rather than poke them through the, a hole in the front. I'm just going to glue it on the back. But you can certainly go back through the original holes if you would like to. Then you can go ahead and color that back white. There's how it looks. The next project is a Victorian inspired cone. Also known as a Tussie Mussy. So you're seeing a bunch of vintage uh, cording and lace and trim that I got from the thrift store. There's a little cone here, some pit berry. A wooden heart that I painted gold and an extra one of those gold hearts and this beautiful piece of fabric that I got from Goodwill. Gorgeous, gorgeous and I really thought Victorian when I saw it. I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and wrap around our cone because the end of that cone is blunt. I'm just going to use paper to go right over the top. The cone on the inside is necessary because we're going to put our florals into it. So there is method to my madness. I'm going to use a little bit of clear tape here and just tape this off, but of course you can use any type of tape that you have or you can hot glue it if you got the patience for it. Then I'm going to cut down the top a little bit with my scissors. I'm going to leave about a half an inch from the top of the foam. It's going to give us a little edge to wrap our fabric around shortly. Let's see how it looks so far. I'm going to grab my hot glue and go to the corner of my fabric and just kind of roll and pull to make sure that I'm going to have good coverage and then when I know it's where it's all the fabric I'm going to need to cover the white I'll just go ahead and trim it off. I should have used bigger scissors for that right? Mm -hmm. But my short ones were what I had in reach so I grabbed them. So I'm adding some more glue here and just going to roll inward. Just roll and push down get that cone in straight then you can trim off so you have enough still on there for you to fold over and make a nice finished edge over your paper you can fold that inward and then glue it down to the paper on the inside and that's really easy to do you just add a little bead of hot glue and fold it in and tuck it against the wall you don't want to have your fabric going all across the foam because if you do that you won't be able to push your flower stems through there and we have to be able to use that foam for the floral arrangement we're putting in there. So you're going to go all the way around till you have a nice edge. Then we're going to fill out our edge with a little bit of trim. And I'm going to double up the trim. 
kind of measuring off how much I'm going to need and then trimming it down. Then I'm going to use some hot glue and I'm not going to go all the way to the top edge, but pretty close, maybe an eighth of an inch away from the top. That's just the way I did it, but feel free to do it any way that you would like. I know that the Crafter Square in the Dollar Tree has lots of beautiful ribbon now and uh, yarn and all kinds of stuff. So you just use what you have on hand. You could cut a doily for this if you wanted to, like if you had an old stained doily or you could cut one of those white paper doilies that you can get at Dollar Tree and you could use something like that. And you don't have to use fabric, you can use paper. I actually have done a Tussie Mussie before. I did it last year. You've probably seen it in one of my compilation videos. Um, but I'll try to link that. And uh, that way you can see how to do it with paper. I'm just going to take the other piece and go right over the top all the way to the edge with this really pretty, it's sort of a beigey, mauvey, taupey kind of color. Taupey, I don't know if that's a word. I'm going to take some of the gold cord and just put it on the back side. And I'm determining the back side by where I have the seam of my uh, fabric in the back. And I'm just going to use clamps to hold that in place for a minute till it dries. Then you'll see me pull it off, but it actually is a minute or two before I pull it off because I don't want it to fall off. I don't want to glue it to my table. And so this is our hanger. You would hang a Tussie Mussy off of a door or the wall or some place like that. I have some of these, I don't know what that is, like a wood chip. Then I have some thrifted ferns. And I have those beautiful pink pieces from the Dollar Tree. Those are gorgeous and I need more because they're really pretty. I'm going to take these fern picks, get whatever greenery you like. I've, like I said before, I think fern and a smaller scale greenery looks better with Victorian. If you look at the pictures and their cards and things like that, you see a lot of ivy and um, fern, stuff like that. Just do your research, you know, I don't know everything, and I'm certainly not somebody who is a, um, I'm not well versed in Victorian. I just go by my own research, you know, just do, I just do my own thing here. So if you don't like it, or if it's not what you think is appropriate, then you can certainly change up and do it however you like. I'm going to add the bigger florals next. And I think one of them is a rose, and I'm not sure what these other two are, but they look really pretty in here together, I think. That cream color, really nice. And then I'm going to add in the picks that I cut apart into smaller sections, because we don't want anything being crazy looking. Trying to keep this little bouquet or this little cone nice and tight. So I'm putting the florals close together in sort of a mound or a rounded shape. I'm going to go closer to the edge of the cone. You can bend your wires to do that so they stay in place. And then, you know, a little bit higher toward the top and fill that out. This really is a really pretty bouquet also. Isn't that pretty? Maybe even a bridesmaid could carry something like that, depending on your style. That's really pretty. And if you notice, I just set it down in a jar so that I could work from the top and you could see what I'm doing from the top. I can't give you all angles because I only have one camera, but I can certainly show you above and then give you frequent looks of how it's going. I think most people agree that that was satisfactory. So I'm just taking some of the gold pit berry just because I wanted to add some more gold to it, a little bit of richness, and I'm just going to stick those in there. I'm not even giving them a good twist. I'm just kind of letting them be wild, kind of turn them to the side, a little bend here and there. And then to work on the charm, we're going to put the smaller heart right on top of the larger heart. Just going to glue it down. I'm going to take some of this cord. And I think I end up with about nine inches of the cord that I'm using because you can't really see what I'm doing here. I apologize. You remember what I told you all about getting in the groove. Then I'm going to put a piece right at the top of the key. Then I'm going to flip it over and glue the key down sort of dangling down from the center bottom of the heart. And then I actually also glued the top section into a loop. So it will hang down like this freely. Gorgeous. They take a piece of wire or floral wire or one of those um, floral 
styrofoam pins and then just pin it down in there so it hangs. You could always tack it down with a little glue if you prefer to do it that way, but I like the idea of a little movement. It really catches the eye, I think. And I think it turned out nicely. Surely with the three projects that we have done, one of these would be something that you would like to have in your home or that you would like to try. It gives a gift for somebody. Valentine's Day is coming up. It's less than a month away, and it's always important to let the people around you that are part of your life to know that you love them and you care about them and that you thought enough about them to make something for them. These do not cost a lot of money, you know. You could easily do these with things that you already have at home, maybe. Just got to kind of think outside the box. I truly believe that all of us do possess some creativity. We're all given gifts by God. And I feel like if you learn something, maybe you should teach something. You know, if it's something that brings you joy and, and it has been definitely 100% found to bring me joy. Most definitely crafting does that for me. And also the joy that I get from sharing with other people who are like-minded, who, you know, and maybe people who didn't think the same as me, but then maybe I changed their way of seeing things. That's important too, right? Thank you so much for joining me on the journey in 2023 for making it my own DIYs. And thanks for stopping by. I will see you again very soon. Bye.